professor. Everything is in order. It is agreed then. The contents are to be delivered directly to Dr. Lysenau. Of the Viral Research Institute at Zurich. Transport it exactly as it is. Under no circumstances take it out of the dry ice packing. Under no circumstances allow the dry ice to run out. He said perfectly, absolutely clear. You expect me to take this to Dr. Lysenau with no proof? No idea of its characteristics, its properties. Here, Dr. Lysenau, here is a germ. Fix it, please. It is more than a germ. It is a weapon. MM88 is an accident. It is a Frankenstein monster masquerading as a virus. MM88. Soon after it was found, we could take DNA apart and reassemble it in different ways. An American geneticist develops this MM88. When we heard of its characteristics, we decided to boil some of it. What characteristics? Essentially, it is a mimic. A what? A mimic attaches itself to existing viruses, such as polio, influenza, etc., increasing both the toxicity level and the reproductive level of the host disease. In other words, it hits so hard and multiplies so fast, it simply overwhelms any vaccine norm. Oh! Excuse. You have a cold? Oh, it's nothing. If I were to open this ampule to the air, you would be dead within three days. Unless a way is found to neutralize this monster, we are left with a doomsday weapon. You've done well. In five days, a bank account will be opened in your name in Brazil. 50,000 pounds will be deposited to that account. You think I did this for money? I want you to get this virus to Dr. Lysenau, nothing more. <laughs> Professor Krauser was hit? Yes. Just as well, I suppose. He wouldn't have been very happy if he found out we were not representing the good Dr. Liza now, after all. We gotta go higher! Give him a turbulent! No, we picked up my radar. Keep hunting the piss! Yeah, safe! What the hell?
come in. Director Rogers. Dr. Meyer, you have a visitor. How are you, Ed? You busy? No, no, I just, uh, I wasn't expecting you till tomorrow. I came by to check on your progress. Well, I have a few things to do, gentlemen, so if you'll excuse me. Did you get it back? No. A scientist named Krauss was making discreet inquiries to the Swiss about something that sounded like MM88. I sent in some of my people posing as Swiss. They never came out. Well, send in some more, damn it! It's vitally important to find out who stole that virus. My only link was Krauss. The East Germans are saying that he committed suicide. So MM88 is still out there, and we don't know where. That's why it is imperative for you to develop a vaccine against it immediately. There's not a vaccine in the world that can stop it. Not likely to be one either. Extremely low temperatures, the virus is completely dormant. But at minus 10 degrees centigrade, it begins to reproduce itself. By minus 3 degrees centigrade, its reproductive rate is increased by a factor of 100. Above zero, it starts growing at a horrendous rate, reaching its peak infectivity at about 5 degrees centigrade, at which time its reproductive rate, the speed with which it multiplies, reaches massive proportions. Its reproductive rate is now something on the order of 2 billion times greater than what it was at minus 10. Look at this, and look at this, and look at this. I'm scared to death of this thing. It's not just a, a vaccine you want to develop from this little monster of ours, is it? I don't know what you're talking about. I know how the system works, Colonel. You develop part of a weapon here, another part over there, the trigger someplace else again, and nobody involved even knows what the hell they're working on until it's all put together. Go on. Militarily, a vaccine would be a very useful defensive element. And that is all you're being asked to develop. Come off it, Colonel. Why is Columbia being asked to do a study on MM88's resistance to extreme heat? You are developing a weapon system based on MM88, aren't you? Ed, at this moment, we do not have a creditable deterrent in the United States arsenal. At this moment, we are capable not only of reducing each other to rubble, but of reducing the rubble to rubble. We were. Before we installed the automatic reaction system, the ARS. So how does that leave us defenseless? The Soviets installed the same system. Now, neither side can employ their missiles even if they want to. So this, this so-called disarmament treaty of President Richardson's is more of his political showboating. We are back to square one, unless we can develop a new weapon system fast. Oh, Christ, not again. Why can't you people ever leave it be? Are the Russians going to leave it be? What's with him? figured it out. Take a look. My God. He's got to blow the whistle to Senator Barclay's Defense Oversight Committee. What do you propose to do? I think you should send him over to uh, Letterman this afternoon for a routine physical. No, no, I'm not crazy. It's not me. It's not not a crazy one, but my God, no! I'm not crazy! The dog! The dog! The
Reports of staggering death tolls are rolling in from all parts of the globe. Vaccines are in short supply everywhere. A world struck with panic has gone berserk. Martial law is the order of the day. Disruption of communications and shipping has left much of the world isolated in fear with inadequate food and medical supplies. A United Kingdom report indicates widespread damage to private and public property. Our Spanish correspondent, Mel Nyman, was killed earlier today while covering the riots in Madrid. Civil disorder in France and West Germany have escalated since our last report. Japan has been the scene of countrywide chaos for over a week. The police report that it will take at least another week to regain law and order and resume distribution of food and medical supplies. Stateside, we are no exception. Mass demonstrations on Capitol Hill have become daily events. This morning, the National Guard reported 57 killed. The demands of an angry crowd for effective vaccines and government action have only been met with military confrontation. President Richardson's televised appeal for calm and restraint has had no effect. It is impossible to predict the restoration of order. Washington's unrest is reflected in That's the rest enough. of the country. In California, the Air National Guard has been utilized to distribute food to eastern regions. What vaccine? All right. How long will it take to, uh, to manufacture this vaccine in quantity? Mr. President, we have not even been able to isolate the cause. The virus, if it is a virus, is like the common cold. It is everywhere. It is nowhere. I'd like to say at this point, Mr. President, that HHS might have been in a better position to develop the crash program if its budget hadn't been slashed against the specific wishes of Congress. Damn it, Senator, I don't have to hear that from you. What do you mean? There is no vaccine? <laughs> then what is it that we're giving the police and fire department personnel, the essential services, the military alert crews, if not a vaccine? It's just that we don't have enough for the general populace. Isn't that right? We, we have a vaccine of sorts. We, we've put together a soup of every flu-related vaccine we know. Its effect leaves something to be desired. In fact, it's more of a placebo than anything else. You gave me a goddamn placebo? We are doing our best. Mr. President, my apologies for being late. But I have been gathering the latest intelligence estimates of our situation. Yeah. This shows where this Italian flu first broke out. Here we have a breakdown of victims. Alive, yellow, dead, black, according to region. As of this morning, Mr. President, I would like to point out the very real possibility that we might not have just an epidemic in our hands, we may have a case of germ warfare. From where? Hmm? What source? Every country on this chart has massive casualties. Can you explain that? As far as we know, some of our information is quite sketchy. Still, the most suspect country should be obvious. Do you have any hard evidence to support this theory? We are working on it. In the meantime, Mr. President, as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I must request that we go onto a stage one alert, including the activation of the ARS network. A nuclear strike, General. All right, stage one alert, if that makes you feel any better, but the automatic reaction system is aimed at the Soviet Union and no one else leaves us no flexibility at all. How flexible are we going to be when Soviet missiles are incoming? Well, the only thing that's incoming are the germs, General. Yes, one moment. Mr. President, the Kremlin. This is President Richardson. What? Yes, uh, <clears throat> yes, I understand. Well, the uh, message was uh, brief enough. Their chief of state died this morning of the Italian flu. As far as we know, I am star fool.
しました。騒がして。これはいつから？夕べまで汗き込んでたんですけど、今朝になったら急にぐったりして。君、すぐ病室へ。高田君にすぐ見てくれと。血液肺炎だ。心臓も弱ってる。大丈夫でしょうか？もっと早く連れてこなきゃ。でも先生、うちで主治医も入院中だし、私も三十八歳あるんですけど、病院はどこも満員でお心配していただけないし。分かった、安心しなさい。肺炎ってやつはこの頃すぐ治る。<笑>はい、次の人。大丈夫だ。大丈夫だ。先生もちょっと休んでください。代わりの私が。じゃあ、タグ。はい。Gentlemen, leaders of the most <laughs> powerful and advanced nation on the face of the earth. Here we sit. Damn it! There must be something we can do about it. Something. Mr. President, has the plague been identified yet? Senator, we don't know whether we're dealing with one plague germ or six. We don't even know where it came from or how it is being transmitted. Well, maybe we've been looking in the wrong direction. We have looked in every direction, Senator. Tell us something about Operation Phoenix, General Garland. Phoenix? What is Operation Phoenix? Just a uh, just a paper study. Oh, one of several options being studied in purely theoretical terms. Mr. President, nothing more. Maybe a little bit more. What are we talking about? Operation Phoenix was a top secret military study of a new weapon system. There are many such studies. It goes with the job. New weapons, new studies, new alternatives. A biological weapon system. It was a paper study. It was an active research project involving the genetic manipulation of existing pathogenic viruses. It was theoretical. New strains were not just studied, they were created in the laboratory. Under completely controlled conditions, I assure you, Mr. President. One strain, MM88, was stolen and never recovered, and the President was never told about it. Now I'd like to know why. Colonel Rankin, get in here this minute. Colonel Rankin, Operation Phoenix was your baby. MM88. Was such a strain developed? Yes, sir. Was any of it stolen? No, sir, but it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. Why not? MM88 was a failure. It was benign. He's lying. Senator, I have had enough accusation for one afternoon. Now, I demand! To know the source of this horrible slander. Sir, this man is a paranoid schizophrenic. I can vouch for that. This is Dr. Baldwin's report. Dr. Meyer is incurably sane, but it took us a little while to find that out because Colonel Rankin had put him away. Colonel, why was he committed? to keep him from passing information about Operation Phoenix to my subcommittee. <clears throat> uh, uh, tell me something. Is this Italian flu actually MM88? I'm sure of it, sir. Sir, I fully support you in this last-ditch effort. 
But I must stress the importance of a strong military posture at this moment. Again, I urge a stage one alert, including the ARS activation. General, get out of my sight. Mr. President. I said, get out of my sight. Gentlemen, we will place a little complete secrecy on this situation. Now, what do you need? Yes. I understand. Doctor, what do you need? This may be the last sunset we'll ever see. If we only had a little more time. <laughs> Those were Dr. Meyer's last words. God, how many entire civilizations have sputtered out with those words. As our speech writers were so fond of having a say about history, those who can't remember the past <coughs> are condemned to repeat it. I wanted my name to be entered into the history books. But I wanted it to be for something meaningful, something lasting. What could I have done that would have made the slightest damn bit of difference? What, uh, what could I have done? Maybe it will snow. Might give us a little more time. <laughs> How? Meyer said that the virus remains dormant in cold temperatures. Well, it's not going to snow, Senator. Besides, it has to get <laughs> damn cold. Antarctica. Almost. Oh, come on, there must be some. Get me Palmer Station. Palmer 
Radar Station. This is the President of the United States. Uh, this is Admiral Conway here, Mr. President. I would like the entire American continent to hear what I have to say. Has the sickness hit your station yet? No, sir. There is no sign of any illness here. And the other stations? There are no reported illnesses at any of the stations, and we are in more or less regular contact. How bad is it, Mr. President? Pass me through to the other Antarctic bases. All of them, sir? All of them, Admiral Conway. Right away, Mr. President. Attention! Attention! All stations! Please stand by for an important message from the President of the United States. It is with great regret and personal sorrow, as well as the position of the government of the United States, that I officially confirm what most of you already know. The world has been beset by a horrible plague, and now we are unable to devise an effective vaccine. We do know something about this virus. We know this virus remains dormant under sub-zero conditions. For this reason, you in Antarctica have not been affected. Do not leave your sanctuary. Do not allow those from the outside to enter. Under no conditions, try to return. I um, offer you no solutions, no hope, other than that somehow you, you may prevail. This time, try to work it out together, please. Please. And may... God bless you all. <coughs> I've been snowed in all this time. <coughs> you and the research crew could be flown down. You'd be safe there. We'll make it. God willing. <coughs> Not we, Mr. President. <coughs> you. You represent the nation. <laughs> the government must continue. in every political battle, but you were never, you were never my enemy.
Mr. President, I formally request that you, under this authority granted by Congress and by the Constitution of the United States of America, meeting your responsibility to defend this great land against all enemies, internal and external, give the order to put our retaliatory forces on full alert, stage one, including the activation of the ARFs. Palmer Station, this is Showa Station. Over. Palmer Station, bye. Our two representatives to the Antarctic Council meeting had transport problems. At last contact, they were proceeding to the nearest station for help. Over. Roger, Showa. We'll be standing by if you need assistance. What's happened here? You were just sitting there, not 
talking. The radio man shot himself. Then everyone went mad. My husband pulled out a gun and pointed it at me. I ran, but he just came after me. I closed and locked the door, and he just kept banging. And then someone shot him. ここに残ってくれないか。俺はどうしても会議に間に合わせなきゃならない。と言って出産間近のあの人を一緒に連れて行くのはとても無理だ。独身の君にはすまんが頼むよ。わかりました。なんとかやってます。こんな時に南極で
Sir, they're on their way here. They wish permission to disembark. Palmer station? No, sir, to the Soviet station. We intercepted the message. It's the Soviet sub T-232. They are requesting emergency assistance, sir. Ensign Smirnov speaking. Acting captain of Soviet submarine T-232. Ensign Smirnov, this is Admiral Conway, chairman of the Federal Council of Antarctica. We understand that some of your men are injured. No injuries, Admiral. We have illness. My men need provisions and medical attention. What is the nature of the illness? Italian flu. In that case, it is my duty to inform you with great reluctance that the Federal Council of Antarctica refuses you permission to land. What are you telling me? Ensign Smirnov, this is Dr. Borodinov, commander of the Soviet Antarctic Wintering Team. Ensign Smirnov, Doctor, requesting permission to land. Smirnov, it is not possible that you should land. You would infect us all. You must understand. Dr. Borodinov, my men must leave this boat. We need rest. We need medical attention. Can you hear me? Doctor, can you hear me? We will land. You will not land. Who is this speaking? Her Majesty's nuclear attack submarine, Nereid. Captain McLeod at your service. This is not your concern, English. We have the most profound sympathy for your situation, Ensign Smirnov. But surely you realize you cannot be allowed to disembark. I have a responsibility to my men. You have a higher responsibility. The safety. Captain McLeod, what is your present position? Sufficiently close, I should say. Um, Captain, do what you have to do. Captain McLeod, we owe you our thanks. Where will you go? We'll just sail on. Captain McLeod. Yes, sir. How long have you been on station? Since February. That's winter back there. 
Captain, I want you to answer this next question very carefully. Are you or any of your men infected? No, sir, we're not. Must be unanimous. Captain McLeod, would you care to come aboard, sir? Yes, sir. I believe we would. Good. We look forward to it. Stand by to surface. Stand by to surface. Stand by to surface. Please. I've just received a notification from my colleague that a Norwegian survivor has just given birth to a baby girl. <sighs> Rather unfortunate being born into this situation. Not necessarily, Doctor. That will be up to us. If there was still a world out there, I'd be a father by now. She chosen a name for the child. Grief. Grief. I like the sound. Grief in Norwegian is a word meaning the first light of the sun, the dawn of a new day. of Antarctica. I've never heard of them. Neither did anyone else before today. We are here. We must have a government. One of their first official actions was to issue a proclamation. Welcoming Greed to the New World. And uh, wishing her every happiness. Every happiness. Also, they want to know if the council can serve as a collective godfather. that I could answer your question. Rape is rape! The fact is, Sylvia was attacked, and it cannot be allowed to happen again. My dear, I'm sure no one wishes to minimize the seriousness of what happened. However, we are dealing with the human animal's natural reaction to the threat of extinction, which is to reproduce, to propagate the species. It is regrettable, but inevitable. This is not the point. If this council cannot take care of their eight women, well then, gentlemen, this whole thing is just a joke. And of course, there's truth in what you say. We must protect our women. I... Oh, let's face it. What we really need is a completely new attitude toward human sexuality. 
in a community of 855 men and eight women, conventional one-to-one -one relationships between men and women will not be possible. Well, uh, that may be so. But I agree with Dr. Latour that we should be concerned with the instinct for survival and think of brothers and sisters for little greed. Indeed. The question now must be, how do we go about it? Dr. Olich? Well, we really don't know how to go about it just yet. Although the problem itself is certainly clear enough. Women have become our most valuable natural resource. And as has just been pointed out, one-to-one -one relationships are no longer possible. This means that each woman, however reluctantly, will have to accommodate more than one man. Of course, we will have to go against deep personal feelings. And this is an extremely serious matter. But somehow we must find the will to suppress our instincts. And that is what troubles me the most. Can we? Can we control our instincts with reason? <sighs> Unless we can, there is no future. This is the Nereid to all Antarctic stations. We are embarking on our first official Federal Council mission to assess the status of the virus and search for other pockets of life. Stations will be contacted individually with respective national reports. Surveillance drone. Surveillance drone now being launched. The drone is over Tokyo. We are receiving video transmission now.
56 feet. 56 feet. Keep 56 feet. Stand by to take on air sample. Analysis of the air sample from the outside environment is complete. Result? Positive. The virus is still quite active. Retrieve the drone. Eject the air sample. Captain, I ask of you, do not eject the sample. That's impossible, Dr. Latour. You want us to keep that, that thing with us? Take it back? It's quite out of the question. I beg of you, reconsider, Captain. You're thinking only of the short-term risk. Captain, this submarine, it is powered by a nuclear reactor. Is there no danger to us from the radioactivity of the core? Of course not. We're completely shielded from it. I accept your expertise in this matter. Will you not accept mine? Captain, what choice do we have but at least to try? Retrieve the drone. Secure air sample in isolation. Retrieve drone, secure air sample in isolation. Retrieve drone, secure air sample in isolation. Let's head for home. Head for home. It'd be different if we had home to return to now, wouldn't it? Head for Antarctica, it should be. 9,000 miles is the crow flies. Except there aren't no crows. Sometimes I cannot express myself very well. Merit. Yes. I believe we have an appointment.
sent for me, Hadamara Conway? Yes, Dr. Yoshizumi. Would you come in, please? It appears we may have a small problem here. Would you mind explaining what this seismic map means in layman's terms? Well, out here is the Baltimore Canyon, where offshore oil drilling had recently started. In my field of earthquake prediction, I became extremely interested in this situation. But uh, that is not an earthquake-prone area. You, you're right, Captain Lopez. But uh, I was concerned about what might happen when the topped oil in this area was brought out. The tremendous weight of the sea pressing down, it could lead to a tectonic movement of great magnitude. What is the expected magnitude of this earth tremor if it occurs? Between 8.6 and uh, 9 on the Richter scale. You place the epicenter here? Yes, uh, within a 100 mile radius of that point. That means that Washington, D.C. could be severely affected? Yes. Doctor, let me ask you, could the shock be as great as a nuclear explosion? Well, the rapid vertical movement of the shock pattern would be like the shock wave of a uh, nuclear explosion. Yes. I should emphasize, however, that this earthquake will occur in the eastern seaboard area, not here. When would you expect this earthquake to hit? Within a month. Uh, Major Carter, I think it's time you told everybody what you already told me. Gentlemen, by way of explanation, Major Carter is a former staff member with the Defense Intelligence Agency. And he acted as liaison to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The United States has in place a retaliatory missile system called the ARS. Automatic reaction system. An earthquake of the magnitude indicated by Dr. Yajizumi would trigger the ARS. Now, the United States military was very closely coordinated with that of the United Kingdom. Captain McLeod, sir. Major Carter is quite correct, gentlemen. About a year ago, in September, while on station, we on the Nereid did indeed receive the activation signal. It's rather surprising, I might add, because we assumed there was no one left alive in Washington to send it. I think it's imperative that you gentlemen hear some cold facts from my Soviet colleague. Captain Nevsky. The first missile to hit Russian soil will set up our entire retaliatory force. Our system was activated over a year ago. But that's not all, I'm afraid. What do you mean? The opinion was held at one time that the United States was planning the construction of a secret base here at Palmer Station. I believe that Palmer Station is targeted. What? That is insane. The United States had no particular monopoly on idiots. But this is, is impossible. There is one thing we could do. Send someone to Washington to disarm the damn thing. But what about the virus? If you're right about the earthquake, what choice have we?
is stupid. Yes! This is stupid! Admiral, I'm going myself. It's all right, Doctor. Major Carter is correct. It must be him. He will need help. I was going to take someone with me, which I'm not. It sure as hell wouldn't be you. Why? Look, Doctor, have you ever handled explosives? Yes, many times. You says make experiments. Well, even if you had handled explosives, you'd slow me down. No. I don't want to hurt your feelings, Doctor. But you're not physically tough enough for the job. I'm sorry. No. You're gonna go on back home now, you understand? Now get up! I suggest you get out of my way and get on home. No. Life is wonderful. <laughs> hey, Yoshizumi. How do you say life is wonderful in Japanese? is in order. You leave early tomorrow morning to your success. 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 How quickly the last few days have gone. If only we could 
turn back the clock. How many days would it take to reach Washington? Ten days, I should say. Eight women and children and a skeleton crew will get underway in the icebreaker first thing in the morning. If worst comes to worst, they should still be out of range when the missiles hit. Assuming the missiles are accurate enough to hit the base. <coughs> there is no question of our missiles not hitting the target. That's very reassuring. And what about the rest of you? The rest of us will hope for the best. Sure. Major Carter, I have been saving this for a very special occasion. I really shouldn't take it, sir, and drink it by myself, but I will. <laughs> if Carter's going to get drunk tonight, you don't want to be in the same room with him. Use my room. No, please. Thank you. Doctor, I trust you will forgive this last-minute intrusion, but without going into boring detail, I believe, I believe, mind you, that I have developed a vaccine against the virus. But how? 
Oh. Well, to uh, simplify, it appears that high levels of radiation introduced into a living virus cell create an effective antibody. Of course, uh, I cannot force anyone to become a guinea pig. But uh, under the circumstances... What the hell? The uh, effect should be immediate. To minimize the danger to the crew, do not inject yourselves until just before you leave the submarine. If it does not work, Please report your symptoms as long as you can. We will do our best. Chaps, all right? Why, thank you. He certainly sleeps a lot, doesn't he? I do sleep a great deal. 
We were speaking of it yesterday. We have never slept so much before. I know. Oh, good morning, Captain. When do we get to Washington? Oh, you've got uh, five days more to sleep, Major. That long. It's still within your deadline, is it not? Oh, yes. But, uh, earthquakes do not always occur on schedule. Well, maybe you should try it before, sir. You got any more surprises for us?
afraid of heights? Sometimes. Well, can you handle this? I must. We are running out of time. All right. Let's go.
Somewhere in there, eight. This is Yoshizumi speaking. Over. Yoshizumi, this is the Myriad. Over. We were too late. Save yourselves if you can. We all promised station to evacuate. We tried. We tried. We all tried, Yoshizumi. We all tried. There's just one more thing. Tell Dr. Latour. His vaccine seems to have worked. In case that still matters. At this point in time, life still matters. You stay where you are. You just might be safe. God willing. Thank you. 
Thank you.